Hey everybody, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through dermatomal testing as a part of your cervical spine neurological assessment. And the reason we complete dermatomal testing is to see whether or not your patient's loss of sensation has been caused by a compression of one of the cervical spine nerve roots, which would be the case if their symptoms fitted a distinct dermatomal pattern. If their symptoms do not fit a dermatomal pattern, there may be many other causes to their symptoms, including a local nerve compression, a diabetic neuropathy, or a vascular cause, to name a few. So, it's time to get into our main video. Let's get clinical. So what you will find in clinical practice is that there is a relative variation in dermatomal patterns, not only between one patient and another, but also between different textbooks, which will have different interpretations of where the dermatomes are. This is because researchers of medicine have used different methods of mapping dermatomal patterns over time. So therefore, it's a good idea to have an understanding of where the dermatomes are, but don't be surprised if the patient's sensory issues do not fit an exact replica of the dermatomes you study. It is also important to note that dermatomal areas overlap, and so in this video we're going to be looking at the most consistent tactile areas for each individual dermatome, i.e. the area we can link to an isolated dermatome. Here is our diagram indicating the dermatomal areas of C2 to T1, which are the dermatomes we'll be covering in this video. I'm now going to take you through the area on the patient's skin that we test in connection with each dermatome. You will notice that we will not be testing the sensation at every part of the dermatome as shown in the previous diagram, partly because dermatomal areas overlap as we said. So instead, we're focusing on the area we can link most clearly to an individual dermatome. So now we're going to take you through the dermatomal regions of the upper limb and the neck and head. What we're going to start with doing is go through these in detail, and then we'll go through them more quickly later on in the video. So we're going to take you through C2 to T1. Starting with C2, the C2 dermatome covers the posterior aspect of the head in a C shape, and it goes from one ear posteriorly round to the other ear. So C2 from one ear in a C shape posteriorly and round to the other ear. C3 is in a, a ring from the lower half of the anterior neck round through the posterior neck and coming back round the other side back to the anterior neck. So just one more time, a ring shape from the lower cervical spine from the anterior all the way around the posterior and back again to the other side. C4 is from the medial clavicle directly across to the ACJ, the acromioclavicular joint. So once again for C4, medial clavicle directly across to the ACJ. Next is C5. And the way you can always remember your C5 is one third to one third. So C5 is from one third down the lateral humerus, going down the lateral side of the arm to one third down the radial side of the forearm. So C5, one third to one third, one third of the way down the lateral humerus to one third of the way down the radial side of the forearm. C6, C6 goes in a direct line from the anterior shoulder down to the base of the thumb. So a direct line from the anterior shoulder to the base of the thumb and then into the thumb, both anteriorly and posteriorly. So one more time, C6, anterior shoulder, direct line through the arm to the base of the thumb, and then running into the anterior thumb and also into the posterior side of the thumb as well. C7. C7 is a smaller dermatomal region from the center of the palm through to the second, third, and fourth digits anteriorly, as well as on the dorsum of the hand, from the center of the palm, as it were, to the second, third and fourth digits. C8 from the ulnar styloid directly across to the tip of the fifth digit. One more time for C8, ulnar styloid across the lateral hand to the tip of the fifth digit. Now if you remember previously C5 was one third to one third. T1 is two thirds to two thirds. So for T1, two thirds of the way down the medial aspect of the humerus running across the ulnar side of the forearm two-thirds of the way down. So T1, two-thirds to two-thirds. 
two-thirds of the way down the medial humerus to two-thirds of the way down the ulnar aspect of the forearm. And those are the dermatomes. We're going to run through them one more time quickly, starting with C2. C2, C-shape, one ear, posteriorly, round to the other. C3, a ring from the lower cervical spine, round to the posterior aspect, and back round again to the anterior. C4, medial aspect of the clavicle, across to the ACJ. C5, one third to one third. One third of the way down the lateral humerus to one third of the way down the radial aspect of the forearm. C6, direct line from the anterior shoulder all the way down to the base of the thumb and then into the anterior and posterior thumb as well. C7, center of the palm to two, three and fourth digits and also posteriorly center of the dorsum of the hand two, three and four. C8, ulnar styloid across to the lateral aspect and to the tip of the fifth digit and T1, two-thirds to two-thirds. Two-thirds of the way down the medial humerus to two-thirds of the way down the ulnar aspect of the forearm. So those are the areas that we use as a part of our upper limb dermatomal testing. Now we're going to show you how we do the testing in practice. So what should you use as your instrument for testing dermatomal sensation? Cotton wool is often used as the main instrument to test your patient's ability to feel light touch, so that's what you'll see us using in this video. Look out for a particular dermatome where our model is going to have a sensory deficit. See if you can work out which dermatome it is, and look for how we clarify the percentage difference in sensation from the right to the left. So now we're going to show you how to test the dermatomes of the upper limb and around the head and neck uh, with our patient here. We're going to be using a piece of cotton wool as our uh, tool for testing the sensation. In a second, we're going to ask our patient to close their eyes, and then we're going to be running the cotton wool through the different dermatomal areas on the right and left sides. We're going to ask our patient if it feels the same on the right and the left. If it feels different, we want to know how it feels different. For example, the right feels less sensation than, uh, than the left or vice versa. And we also would like to ask them the percentage difference between the two. We might be able to use that as a comparison in future sessions to that from our initial assessment. So, let's get into it. So, I'm now going to be using this piece of cotton wool and running it down different aspects of your arms and around your head and neck. I'd like you to tell me, please, if it feels the same on the right as it does on the left. All right. Could you close your eyes for me? Thank you. So, does this feel the same as this? Yes, that feels the same. Does this feel the same as this? Yes. Okay. Does this feel the same as this? Yes. Does this feel the same as this? Yes. Can I just get you to lift your arms for me, just so you can see at home? Does this feel the same as this? Yes. Does this feel the same as this? No, that feels different. No. How does it feel different? It feels less on the right side. Okay. The right has less sensation from the left. If I was to ask you as a percentage, how much sensation do you feel on the right compared to the left? This one's 50% less than this one. 50%. Okay. Let's move on. Does this feel the same as this? Yes. And does this feel the same as this? Yes. Thank you very much. And that completes our dermatomal testing of the upper limb and around the head and neck area. If you were looking out for one particular dermatome that didn't feel the same, you'll notice it was the C7 dermatome where our patient said that they felt less sensation on the right in comparison to the left, and they felt a 50% sensation on the right in comparison to 100% on the left. So that is how you go through your upper limb dermatomal testing. And as we have said, it is standard to use cotton wool as your instrument for testing your patient's ability to sense light touch. However, the next step may be to further explore the area of diminished sensation by testing your patient's ability to feel a sharp sensation, 
vibration sensation, or hot and cold sensation. These different tests are not to be done routinely within musculoskeletal practice, but can give you more information about your patient's sensation otherwise, and therefore should not be ruled out of a clinician's toolbox. An example of this might be Brian, a 36-year-old man who has neck pain and peripheral neurogenic pain, and complains of distinct numbness or sensation deficit in the right arm. However, you go through your dermatomal tests with a cotton wool and find nothing wrong. This is where you could use your vibration or SARP stimulus testing, for example, to further explore the symptoms, to confirm or rule out his numbness. So here is a quick video to show you how you may test for your patient's ability to feel vibration and SARP stimuli. So now we're going to take you through our additional dermatomal testing with a sharp stimulus. And for this test, we might suggest that you use the sharp end of a reflex hammer as your tool for testing the sharp stimulus. So the testing, in essence, is very similar to when you use the piece of cotton wool. You would run the sharp end of the reflex hammer through the different dermatomes on the right and left side. You would ask your patient if it feels the same on both sides. If it feels different, how does it feel different? And if there is a difference, what is the percentage difference between the right and the left sides? So, for example, if we were to take this C8 uh, dermatome, which is located from the ulnar styloid down to the lateral fifth digit, we would run our sharp stimulus through that region, and we would ask our patient if it feels the same on the right and the left. If it felt different, we would ask how it felt different, and we would also gather the percentage difference between the two as well. So now we're going to take you through how to test vibration stimulus as a part of your dermatomal testing. And for that, we're going to be using a tuning fork. So when you're using a tuning fork, rather than sweeping through the different dermatomal areas, as you saw us do with the cotton wool and the sharp end of the reflex hammer, we're actually just going to be placing the tuning fork on the most distal part of the dermatome being tested. And the reason for this is because if your patient has a cervical spine pathology which causes a loss of dermatomal sensation, it is the most distal part of the dermatome that is most likely to be affected by paresthesia. So if we take an example of that, the C8 dermatome, which runs from the ulnar styloid down to the end of the fifth digit, we will place our tuning fork on the very distal part of the fifth digit, as it's the most distal part of the C8 dermatome. Now when you're using your tuning fork, you want to make sure that you place the most proximal or the lowest part of the tuning fork on your patient's skin. And that's because if you place the most upper or distal part of the tuning fork on the skin, your vibration will immediately cut out. So make sure you're always using the lower or proximal end. To generate the vibration, you want to tap your uh, tuning fork on a surface such as the plinth and that will generate your vibration. So now that we have the vibration, we're going to place the most proximal or lowest part of the tuning fork on the distal part of the dermatome. And as we're testing the C8 dermatome, that equates to the end of the fifth digit. And we will do it on the right, and we will also do it on the left. And then we will ask our patient to tell us whether the sensation feels the same on the right and left sides. If it feels different, we want to know how it's different, i.e the right feels less sensation to the left, or vice versa. So to summarize this video on upper limb dermatomal testing, here you can see the different areas used to test the dermatomes from C2 to T1. For your testing, use a piece of cotton wool to assess your patient's ability to feel light touch. Ask the patient to close their eyes before you run the cotton wool through the dermatomal areas being tested. As you do this, we want to ask the patient if the sensation feels the same on the affected and unaffected sides, and if it feels normal. If it doesn't, we want to ask how it feels different, and we want to gauge the percentage difference in sensation. For example, the C6 dermatome on the left has 60% sensation compared to the right. If cotton wool testing shows no abnormalities, but you're still concerned about your patient's sensation deficit and want to explore it further, you may go through testing to assess your patient's ability to feel sharp and vibration stimuli. And that completes our video on dermatomal testing as a part of your cervical spine neurological assessment. Next, I'd like to suggest you have a look at our other videos within the cervical spine neurological assessment catalogue, including myotomal testing, reflex tests, 
upper limb tension tests, and palpation of the cervical spine. Thank you as always for joining us on Clinical Physio, and we'll see you again soon.